Trapping fur. It's what first brought white settlers into this country. Possum, coon, fox, both gray and red. And occasionally a coyote that gets in and kills a calf. That's what Roscoe Stinnett's game is today. It's no secret what his motives are. I guess they're not much different from Boone's or Crockett's or any of the rest of them. You can see these tracks there. See where he went in there? Yeah. See these tracks there? See, see right here where he stepped? See right here? Uh-huh. He's going in there, see? He, you don't want to break them twigs off. Because if you do, you don't know you've been there. For over 61 of his 71 years, Roscoe Stinnett's been trapping ever since he was a boy and his grandfather taught him growing up on Little River. You ever go up and stay a couple days at a time? Oh yeah, I've stayed in caves back on Little River for a week at a time. Mm -hmm. and, uh, what would you hunt? Trap? We'd trap muskrats and skunks and possum. We skin everything we caught. <laughs> Boy, we'd get smelling bad. Smelling bad? Oh man, it'd get bad. <laughs> and then well, what'd they do to you when you got home? <laughs> it's over and over. <laughs> they want to smell it. <laughs> Boy, they don't, you get used to it, though it's good for a cold. <laughs> It'll clear your head up. <laughs> Roscoe has his own time-honored value system. He lives by it. To him, trapping is a way to express his own philosophy of conservation. I've seen him just walk around this man here on this farm. He said he'd walk up and kill him with a stick. It's the mange and, and die. That's a horrible death. Talk about being cruel to animals. Now, that's cruel to an animal to have to die like that. Just gradually die with the mange. It's pitiful. If you ever see one, you ain't never seen nothing pitiful. When they get too sick or just, well, when humans look over and where all these people are starving to death now, look at them kids over in Africa. Yeah. Man, that's well, the same thing happens to anything when you get too much. You think you do a service? Sure, sure, it does a farmer service. And if anybody can't see that, they're blind. But it's the outdoors that draw Roscoe for their own sake. It's the love of freedom and love of land that calls him. The same stirring that brought the Watagans across the Appalachians, a yearning for room for body and soul. Would you like to have lived a couple hundred years ago like Boone and those guys? Well, I, everybody's always told, I had a lot of people tell me that I was born about a hundred years too late. <laughs> the way I like to live, I don't know. I, I, I love it, I don't know. I, 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 of course, I, ain't, I, wouldn't want, I wouldn't want the world without people in it, but I, I still don't like to be crowded. I don't think you, you don't head, think head to the high country. I like to get and I like to get up over the top of the hill where I can see off. I'm like a coyote. <laughs> then it comes to that. 